Hello and welcome to another edition of Bulldogs Unleashed, brought to you by Reclaim the Game. Ripping show today, we're going to take a walk down memory lane, particularly the year 1995. It was significant, not just for the Bulldogs, but for Rugby League in general. It was the middle of the Super League war, it was really brewing by then, and it went on to be a great year for the Dogs in a rather unusual season. There's all that, plus... Terry Lamb's amazing injury battle. So that's a sample of what's ahead. In the meantime, though, welcome Luke Goodwin, Rod Silver and Terry Lamb to this edition of the show. Boys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, We've got Luke in here just because we like him so much, but also because initially we're going to talk about what's been going on with the team. There's been a buy round for the Dogs uh, the boys have had a bit of a rest after a one-point win over the Dolphins in Bundaberg. We'll talk about Bundaberg in a tick, but how did they come up after that win? What did it mean to them? Yeah, it was it was great. Um, I was so grateful that we won for the players. Um, we went up to the sunny coast for a few days into camp before we drove into Bundy because we couldn't get a direct flight. Um, and it was a great three days on the sunny coast. Um, the way we connected the training – it was, it was, you know, what we've been probably searching for for a while. So we, we do well. We've noticed when we do go into camp. Um, so we're obviously up to Newcastle on the Saturday just overnight. So, mate, it was great. It was a great experience. Um, yeah, and like I said, for the effort they put in and, and we just, you know, lucky enough, there was a couple of missed goals and we got away with it. So we had a few of our injured players back as well. Uh, yeah, thanks, Terry. Uh, well, you should have brought it up straight away. Uh, well, that wasn't the question, Terry, but... <laughs> <laughs> Stop picking on me like Paul oh, does, okay. please. Thank you. <laughs> so, no, yeah, and Bar said we're back to full strength. We've got every player bar Chrissy mm. Patola, who's gone for the season after he had a bit of a knee, a minor knee operation, a bit of a clean-up. So, um, yeah, a bit excited about this week. And, uh, you know, I think the whole club, you know, owes Newcastle a little bit. <laughs> not with, Notwithstanding all the gossip around who's going and who's arriving next year, to have Luke Thompson for the last four games, that's going to be really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Tomo's a world-class front row, you know. And, and can I tell you, he's going to be a bit underdone, naturally. Mm. He hasn't played the whole season. So got about 25 to 30 in New South Wales Cup two weeks ago. Then we had to buy. So, yeah, but he's he looks fit. Is he looks fit downstairs, yeah. It must be really I – I can only imagine what it's like sitting out almost an entire season and then coming in. I can't recall either of you guys having to go through that. Have you been through anything like that? Yeah, Les Davidson broke my jaw in 92. That's so right. Well, that'll do it. 14 <laughs> weeks. I missed 14 weeks. I've just yeah. been married for three months, so, yeah, it was pretty good. There was no kissing, <laughs> there, was no kissing there, Robert. There was no arguing either. <laughs> <I was. laughs> no, he's, you know, it was just one of those things in the heat of the battle. But um, yeah, Was, was three, he suspended, Rocket? Um, I think he got six weeks after okay. they, you know, uh, I think Jack Gibson requested something be done because I was only young. And, um, yeah. Well, I know, I know Bundy. Yeah, he's a good okay. bloke. He's a good he, man. He came and saw me in hospital. Yeah, he wouldn't have meant, yeah. meant oh, too wow. much about he, it. He was just – it was a fatal error because he just dropped the ball, so he was filthy on himself and someone said, take take one from dummy half because we were winning. <laughs> <laughs> and someone tucked me low and then next minute, yeah. Bushka. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, the bells. Both the, sides. Well, Both it's sides. It's different uh. Different name now. Like yeah. everybody, anybody gets hit in the head. They look yeah. at the review. Oh, yeah. You know, ten minutes in the bin, or the the, the, the Titans front row on the weekend. But the collision was just hard, and the old mate's head flung forward. Like, mm. what are you meant to do? Yeah. Seriously, yeah. like, That's and I get it though. It's all about player safety, but geez, it's mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd like um, if someone does get hit in the head, get up. A lot of players are laying down now. Yeah. Get up, play the ball, and let the review do it after the game. Mm. That's yeah. the best way to. That's just my way. I think. Yeah. If well, you it, it, if keeps, you it keeps players on the field, <laughs> there's no can. doubt. But um, uh, just quickly back to to the um, the whole notion of, you know, a team coming together relatively late in the season, it's 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 weird. H- how did you find it when you actually got back on the field, Rocket, uh, in that yeah. year? Mm, so 92 was when I got my jaw broken. So um, I think the coach was worried about me, Mark Murray, who was the coach of the Roosters, when I come back and he... <laughs> he made me wear some headgear and he was worried about me putting my head in the right place for tackling. So we did a bit of one-on-one stuff. He was pretty good, Muppet, like that. Um, mm. and did you have a mouth guard rock? I, no, not not at that oh. time, but I did after that. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And the sevens, you know, I was I was really looking forward to the sevens, but because of how I come back, I suppose, he, he just didn't want to play me. So I missed that. And then, um, yeah, I, I started the year. 
um, back in first grade, but David Sudenkamp did a fantastic job. Yeah, He's a good bloke. He, yeah, he played for the Dogs. But I think it's um, really important how a team finishes a season. Mm. Like for us at the moment, we can't make the semis, but you'd like to know that are we going to go that good next year? So yeah. this is a time to start playing. And, and on that point, Bar, how, how much, I presume by now, even though there's been some very you know interesting mid-season movements, uh, we do have a core team now. Uh, we know who's coming in next year to some extent. And, uh, and we know that Steve Crichton, for example, is, is going to fit in pretty well with a couple of the guys that are already here. But given that, that there is a core of this team that is going to move on. So that, that is important, isn't it? Unlike pr- other seasons where yeah. sometimes the team next year doesn't necessarily resemble what the team that finished the previous yeah, season. Yeah, but we still got the, the main players that we want yeah. in yeah. the right positions who yeah. are staying. So that's pretty important for with Kikau and Reid Marnie. And yeah. and we just need to follow Gus and see where he has coffee and who we <laughs> <laughs> and we know who's going to be signed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and look and look just on that it is a chess game and and uh, people who and understandably lose patience with these things um, it happens in every professional sport all over the world it's happening right now in the Premier League before yeah. they kick off their season yeah. and there are players being moved around and not moved around and fans getting impatient with who hasn't been signed and all those things but a lot there's a lot of pieces that have to be put into place there's compatibility there's availability. And uh, there's fitness, there's salary cap. A lot of things have to be worked out. And sometimes you do, correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes you do have to sign what I would call interim players. And um, Bar and I were talking off camera about, for example, uh, Tauki Aho, if he comes in, if a player like that comes in at the age of 32 or whatever, they, they can play a role at a club for a couple of years. It's not necessarily yeah. – you, you can't sign everyone at the age of 18 and have them go yeah. through to their 35. You can't keep them for a start. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, so it's th- about finding those right ones in, in the spots, your positions you need them. So you look at our roster now, there's not a lot of experience. There's mm. not, no old heads. You know, mm. when I was, when we come here, we had Terry who was already 45 when we were here. <laughs> um, so we had those old experience. And guys. Brocky. Yeah, yeah, Brocky, Mark yeah. Brokenshaw, yep. Munster, Martin Bella. So, yeah. so we had those older guys, so – when you're on the field, you know, I was scared to look sideways because the bar was there, you know, you had Brocky there and, you know, guys mm. either side of you. So um, now at the club, we're such – like you took Josh Re- Josh Reynolds out of the club now. Mm. We're the youngest team in the comp. Mm. So that's how young our, mm. our squad is. So we do need some experience. Yep. Um, like I said, just watch who Gus has coffee with. And so uh, and, and look, the um, you can't always get who you want either. Mm. You know, things yeah, happen. Uh, agents well, make decisions go somewhere else. Sexton's done a great job for us. Well, yeah. that was my next question, Bar. Oh, I was going to say, he's, he's, is he a long-term prospect? Can now? I tell you, Billy, uh, uh, what I love most about the kid, and we grew up, I played footy, uh, I was a fan. I had every footy card, like just, you know, was, you know, seeing these, um, you know, athletes. He's a footy head. Mm. He's always in the in the video room. He's always on the computer. His notes and pad are full. And when he talks upstairs in front of the players and he's talking, you know, our indicators this when we need to move and stuff, I'll just sit there and go, well, how good mm. is this? He's actually a football, like football um, you nerd. Know, nerd of the game. Yeah, he is. Yep. It's great. Yeah. Every team needs a footy nerd. Yeah. Let's look, look at all that in the context of a game coming up against Newcastle, which is really interesting because, you know, given the draw these days, it's not unusual now to face a team within the space of four or five weeks. Yeah. And in this case, we face a team that put 66 without mm-hmm. reply uh, on, on this club at home. So now you go to Newcastle, uh, have to play them again. But, gee, that, that team sheet looks a lot different this week than it did that short time ago against the Knights. So yeah. this will be interesting. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. on a five-game winning streak. Yeah, they are. They're, geez, they're playing some good footy. And our reserve grade too. I think they put 40 on our reserve grade that yes, day. So, yes, they did. And we play them in both grades up there. So, yeah, mm-hmm. we've got a, you know – Without, you know, emotion only last a minute on the field, as we know. We can get all hyped up, but, you know, we've got to be smart on how we do it. And like you said, I think um, I think Cam said this morning, there's nine plays that had nothing to do with that game. They didn't play. So, you know, I don't think... Some know. pressure on them then. Yeah, yeah, we've got yeah. some... Yeah, because yeah. there's a weight of expectation. Absolutely. Like that, yeah. that, that mob up there, they go nuts for their own team. Yes. Yeah. And I, I remember when we played them up there, Bar and... The year we won it, we, we yes. got pumped 42 nil. Oh, that was and the last year lost, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yes. that was Before the, the last run. Year yeah, yeah. And that's when we went out that week, I think, on a harbour cruise. So <laughs> they kind of sorted everything out. Was, was it a place at Chester Hill? Yes. Yeah. 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 But I, like I think, 
um, that kind of turned us. Which brings me to, and I'm glad you brought that up, Rocket, because I was going to ask, <coughs> excuse me, I was going to ask uh, when Luke mentioned the, the, the brief camp up at the Sunshine Coast before Bundaberg. Mm. And it's amazing how sometimes these little things, it might be a harbour cruise, might be a three-day camp. Uh, why? Why do those things sometimes work mid-season yeah. when a club's just struggling a bit? Well, why? just my point of view, it's away from home. Yeah. You've got no kids around, no family around. Yeah. Mm. It's no just distractions. You're you're not saying they're you're distractions. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. It's you and your mates. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. They room together. Like uh, Simple things like I, know I was up every morning at six o'clock at the beach watching the sunrise with mm. like Fox. And that's something Fox would never do in a million years. Right. But he was sitting there and, you know, Birdo was there, Reed, um, you know, Blake Wilson. We all sit there, like, and we went for a swim. Mm. Like, I wouldn't do that here. Mm. But because we're all together and we all got in the, you know, the, the 12-seater vans, go down, grab a coffee, go to the beach, have a walk, have a swim. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know what it is. But the, there is no distractions and, you know, we can have massage, you can go back and relax, have a shower, have a swim, get ready for the next session, then come together at night. And what what stood out for us is they wanted to hang out with each other. So they all watched the New South Wales Cup together. together. So we had it live stream from here. They all sat around playing cards. You know, some guys you sit around, you know, coffee, they're different yeah, groups, yeah. but they all stayed in the uh, com the common room together, which was, it was like, wow, it's that's why we knew, okay, this worked. I think that was the best thing about our 95 side. Everyone kind of liked each other. Yeah. <laughs> and got on. That helps. And, um, you know, we had a lot of lunatics in that team. But, yeah, oh, yeah, big time. Um, I think they respected each other yeah, more than anything. Yeah. But like a person is important. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, you might have some idiots in the team sometimes. and you know, Simon, Jimmy's up there. Jimmy's up Jimmy's but, there. Simon it. Gillies, for example, very smart man. Yeah. yeah. And different cat. He, he, different, yeah. different dude. Really yeah. different We're going to talk about that in more detail yeah. a little later on in the context of the 95 season. But, yeah, likeable. They don't have to be people you necessarily hang out with on a day-to-day -day basis, but as long as you appreciate them for what they are. Yeah. Well, you, you got that respect, don't you? Yeah. That's what it is, yeah. So what do you think? Um, I guess – Cameron Seraldo's got a lineup that he can now really, really work with. I, I know that sounds unfair to the previous yeah. lineups we've had this year, but I think you know what I mean in terms of longevity. Yep. Yeah. So um, I presume it's one of those situations where if you ask Ciro what his strategy was this week, it'd be, well, we'll just do what we can do best and mm. that, that hopefully will be good enough to beat Newcastle. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. And, and we spoke about this morning in the coaches' meeting. So we were off on that day. We were short of, mm. of players, but there was some real fundamental stuff, you know, especially in our defence that we got wrong, mm. inside shoulder stuff, not staying straight for as long as possible, a lot of that stuff. Um, so we don't – there's not – I know this is going to sound stupid. 66 points is a lot of mistakes. <laughs> You're right. But there's not a lot we have to change because the, we kept getting the same thing wrong. Yep. Well, that right edge defensively, yep. yeah, it was a yep. – Oh, they're coming at that edge again. We know that. Mm. Yeah. Like we we got to be better. Just, you know – Jacob Carraz, um, you but know. But we, we also aside. have to worry about their main players. Yeah. And some of their main players just threw cut-out balls, short balls and just put – Well, Pong is on. He's best I've seen him play in a few years. Yep. Yeah, he is yep. going well. And a, yep. and a guy called Bradman Best has scored a try in each of his last four games against Canterbury, six in total. So we've got to find a way to make him not like playing against us. Yeah, yeah. I wish it was at Belmore. Well, looks, <laughs> yeah, we'll put yeah. Jared McCracken against that's, him. Yeah, that's, oh. that's, that's, let's take it back a few years to – how we used to be in defence. Yeah. Mm. Just get in their face. Show yeah. my tape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, 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 you have, did you guys have teams that you just, for, for whatever reason, they could be top of the table that you just enjoyed playing against uh, uh, at a given time? I, I don't know. Was, we, we worried about ourselves more yeah, than anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was us getting our own game in, in, the, in the action. We always beat the Broncos bar. We never, no, yeah, we, we always we did the for Broncos some reason. In New Zealand, remember yeah. we went over New yeah. Zealand, played them for over years. There. We just, I love playing them. I don't know mm. why they were the best, and I suppose the standard back then. That's what I'm getting at. Some people yeah. just enjoy. Um, Steve Gearan said the other day that uh, that 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 team loved playing at the SCG. Yep. Yeah. As much as they love Belmore, yeah. uh, in the 1980s, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, they loved playing at the SCG. There was something special they about played it. there a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they we were did. good when they were there. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I can't blame them. But no. I think you've got to want to play with your own players as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Rock had said it before. It's about, yeah, they all got on. Yeah. Everyone liked yeah. each other. Yeah. And, you know, there was that healthy respect. 
By the way, we have had some questions. I did make reference to getting Jeff Robinson on the show a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we, we are still going to do that. It's just that yeah. uh, he was delayed for a couple of weeks in getting back, uh, not being available. But we're going to get Robbo on the show and um, a few other surprises too. So uh, stay tuned for that, but we are working on it. Um, so, um, Luke, thank you. Um, we'll have a great day in Newcastle, we hope, and I'm sure it'll be a very different game to what we saw just a few, few weeks ago. But all the best, mate. Thank you for Thanks, coming mate. in. Thanks, boys. Bye, Luke. Good on you, Thanks, brother. Terry. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is Bulldogs Unleashed, brought to you by Reclaim the Game. When we come back, Rocket and Bar, we'll talk about Super League 1995 and all the things that went on around that. Uh, my name is Braden Burns and I play for the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. I love playing footy because um, obviously I've played it since I was a kid. Yeah, the fans are obviously really important to every footy player. We go out and we play for the fans and the members especially. You hear um, the fans obviously when they're giving it to you on the sideline. As a young kid I was pretty easily influenced and um, I sort of got into gambling a little bit, not too bad, but um, I guess it just takes away from the game. You don't sort of sit there and watch the game for what it is and enjoy those special moments and, and sort of support your team. You're more worried about your multis. Yeah, I'm really proud that the Bulldogs as a partner would reclaim the game. Um, I'm someone who, who's sort of gotten off betting. I'm really proud to say that um, that's something that I'm sort of walked away from and um, I'm proud to be a part of it. Don't let a bet take you away from the match. Reclaim the game. Be gamble aware. Let's talk about the dog days. Welcome back to Bulldogs Unleashed with Rod Silver and Terry Lamb. Brought to you by Reclaim the Game. We're talking now about 1995. Someone was trying to claim the game. Uh, we had the Super League season and uh, it was the officially ARL season because administration was passed on from New South Wales Rugby League to the national body. But at the same time, guys, there was all this stuff brewing about the Rebel League. We didn't actually see it happen for a little while after 95. But that year, first of all, Rod, I'll tell you why, because you were kind of in the, in the thick of it, of it weren't you? Well, <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. So, so I was at the Roosters and, yeah, the ARL, NRL war started. Um, the Roosters were aligned with the ARL. Um, the Dogs were with the Super, Super League. League yep. So, um, yeah, through my manager, I signed with Super League. So basically I kind of had to leave the Roosters. <laughs> uh, not that I wanted to because I always wanted to be one um, club player, but it yeah. wasn't to be. And look what happened. Come to the Dogs and we win the comp in the first year. So, And I got a game, so it was nice. I, I did say to Rod earlier, because we've touched on this in, in a previous show, uh, that, that as a fan, I just thought, how good is this? We've got Rod Silver in the middle of the season. Mm. And before we get on to what problems that solved and how it helped the team, Bar, what was your experience at that time as a player? I mean, Rod, as he's just explained, was signed by the so-called evil empire at the time, but mm. depending on what side of the league you're on, what was it like for the dogs? Because Bullfrog... Went to Super League, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, absolutely. And that led to arguably one of the – there were a lot of feuds. And I, I don't know if I'd even call this a feud, but certainly it led to a, a split between one of the biggest friendships in the game, and that was Ken Arthurson and Peter Moore. Yeah. And, and uh, there was a huge respect between Manly and Canterbury because those two giants of the game were, were very close – uh, and they went different ways. So there was a lot of stuff going on. Well, the best thing about that was Arco did see Bullfrog before he died. So they, mm. they made up then. Yeah. Um, and we were the first club to join the Super League. We all went together as a team, as a club. Um, everybody made some good money. And and then we had a bit of a hiccup in, in, in halfway through the season. It, it, well, we'll get to that in a minute because it wasn't all one-way traffic into the Bulldogs. There was some major drama involving four players. Again, we've made passing reference to this period uh, in previous shows, but we're going to dig into it a little bit more. When did you first hear about Super League well, as a player? Because a lot of stuff was going on behind the scenes. Did it come through the newspapers? Was it in the dressing room? Did, did anyone from the club mm, say anything to no, you? What not, happened? Not really. No one... We didn't we didn't think about it too much. Well, I I didn't, mm. but I, I mainly heard about it when Bullfrog and, and uh, Chris spoke to me about it and right. said we're going in as as a club, and we all did go in as mm. a club. So uh, we had no choice virtually, but at least we went in together, and um, we come out together. So all good. And and listen, some of the play I'm over talking about it too because it did split us, mm. but we're all still friends now. Yeah. So that's the most important part of the Super League war. Um, mates didn't speak for a little while and got together and spoke mm. and we won the comp. 
That's important. We'll get on to that in a minute um, from Canterbury's point of view. But I remember as a, a television reporter at the time, uh, Rod, that, that Gus Gould and Bobby Fulton basically uh, put the, the, uh, the establishment on their backs and were very, very public speakers for uh, fighting against Super League taking over the game. When did you first find out about it? Um, I think I was just at a Roosters training session. Um, yeah, they spoke about it and then all of a sudden all the players were going to headquarters, um, you know, getting the best deals like you would. So, yeah, um, I can't exactly <laughs> remember the details of mm. going in there, but I, I, w- I went in there because I thought I had to sign it to play f- footy. So mm. that's w- I signed a contract with the uh, ARL then, but then after, you know, seeking advice from um, my manager, um, I signed with Super League. Uh, so that, there was a bit of a court battle because they weren't telling us everything um, mm. as a player. So, um, and yeah, it got quashed. So I was able to keep my Super League contract and, and come to the dogs. It's a little bit with the golf now. It's virtually yeah. Super yeah, League, yeah, yeah. New South Wales. That's what it is with the golf. That's so a good point. Yeah. It is a, a, a good comparison bar. You know, you get some players. Golf off getting offered one hundred and seventy million, mm. and other people are getting sixty million. So yeah. you know it's huge money in there. And now they're all back together again. Yes, they, yeah. well they're trying to. We we had twenty teams, um, including the Western Reds. All, all that lasted only two years. Um, how did it feel at the time? The expansion of the league as well. Um, you know, that did did you know much about that? Prior to '95, not really, mm. not really, Bill. I, I knew it was just another trip away, like yeah. to play a game. Adela- yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you know the Reds, the, um, Adelaide. What are they called? Rams. Yeah, the Rams. Uh, they, they came Western. along later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, as part of the Super League thing. And but, there was, you know, they, those clubs had good players. Like MG went to the Reds, and um, yeah, the Rams had a like Skiffaletti and a few Luke, of the Sharks. Luke was there as well, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yep. The Reds did very well. Peter Mulholland, who's a great, great man, um, took the Reds to 11th on the ladder. John Money coached the Warriors. They were another new club yep. to 10th yep. on the ladder. Uh, the Cowboys were another new club and they, they got the wooden spoon that year. They only won a couple of games. But um, it, was, it was a really interesting year and a lot of movement, I'd imagine, a lot of player movement. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Um, apart from your was, own. I don't think there was enough referees for all the games. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable. Imagine if they had the two referee rule back then. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, and for the first time we had a top eight. Yes. Uh, again, as players. Does, does does that ever get thought or do you just take it the old classic one week at a time, beat who's in front of you, well, whatever? Well, there was a top six first. There was five, then there was six. So we were lucky to jump in in 95 for the six mm. spot. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, thank God for that. Um, but yeah, top eight. That was uh, interesting. That, that would that, that, that all that stuff. Um, there was legal, as you indicated, Rod. There was legal action taking place all over the place. Uh, players, managers, clubs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, players who um, had signed with Super League weren't selective to state of origin and all those yeah. sorts of things. And none of that was really sorted out until they split. And then there were separate states of origin. Oh, it was madness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Canterbury was not Canterbury, but the Sydney Bulldogs. Sydney Bulldogs, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lindy Anderson was uh, was our. We, we're sitting right here and right now. This yeah. is where myself, Chuck Halligan, Jimmy Dimmick, and Luke Goodburn sat in the marketing department right here. This is the area. What was Lynn like as a boss? Oh, fantastic! She was great. Yeah, it was one thing that good about it for me was I was at the end of my tr- career mm. and. Um, Bullfrog and Chris Anderson and Punch used to play golf on Wednesdays. So um, they said, would you like to play golf on Wednesdays too? I said, I'm good at asking Lynn. Bullfrog said, she's my daughter, mate. You can come and play with us. <laughs> so wow. I, I went to play with him on a Wednesday. <laughs> One of the perks of the family club. <clears throat> yes. Yep. Um, uh, what about Chris Anderson as coach? Took over from Gus in, in 1990. Uh, now... I'll get to you in a sec, Rod, because landing in the middle of a club in the middle of the year, I mean, we've talked about it with Toby Sexton and other players have done it this year uh, with, uh, with other clubs they have gone both ways. But um, for you, you'd known Chris since he was a player. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So yeah. W- what was that like? Uh, it was p- quite easy. Um, but the probably hardest part about it was when Kev Moore started playing footy and um, his, his brother-in-law for a start. So that, that sort of couple of hiccups goes... Does he pick him or doesn't he pick him? Yeah. So 
Um, it's it's got to be hard on Chris too, you know. Like, does he go against the family? Does he go against the club? So he brought people in to say sh- who who should we pick? Malcolm Clift was one of the uh, selectors right. as well. Um, Charlo, uh, Phil Charlton was one of the selectors. So they they sort of did the selecting for Chris and and uh, Kev got a start. But Kev was a decent player. Broke his arm in the first game. I don't know who it was against, but it was in the bush somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, but I got the respect for everybody. Chris Ann was a, a coach that coached the team, not just one mm. one or two people. Uh, and you were captain? Captain, yeah. Captain for a few years. 34. Yeah, I was captain there since uh, 90, 1990, I think mm. it was, yeah. And then just with what well, with that captaincy in 95 particularly, <clears throat> how much of a burden was it or was it not that hard? I mean, given all the oh, stuff that was going on. You know. I've seen um, – I know Rocket came in in that year, but I seen all these kids come through with Jeff Robinson when Robbo was coaching the under twenties, mm. and they won the comp in nineteen ninety. So Robert Ralph, uh, Wardy, um, Jimmy was new then. So Paul Amana, uh, the Smith brothers, they were coming through at the time. So I knew them prior to the ninety five grand final. So they were just growing up at the time, and um, and very good players like. Mm. The, to me, the Smith brothers, so completely different people. <laughs> but Jason Smith is one of the most talented ball players I've ever yeah. played with. Where Darren was a uh, tackle, could run, um, just a up and down player. But they're the players you need. Mm. But um, Jason was incredible. So was Jimmy Dimmick, and um, you know, Dean Pay was a great ball player too. Uh, they watched all them kids grow up and. I don't know if I gave him the right advice, but <laughs> I gave him some advice. Rod, when you come into that side, you had a few years with the Roosters and as Bar said, there's a generation of blokes who've played together. How is it to be the, the guy who's come in mid-season? Yeah, it was, it was a great team to come into. I was very fortunate and um, through my manager, Sam Sammy Ayub, he was saying that Chris Sanders said he wanted me to come to the dog. So, um yeah, I felt like I was welcomed and, you know, the boys welcomed me and the the bloke who probably affected me the most uh, during my time at the Bulldogs was Bill Johnson. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he, he changed the way I thought about rugby league. Um, he, he probably made me a different player because of, you know. the Is that from the, the fitness point of view? Oh, it's a, it, just the one-liners, you know, the, the stuff he <laughs> – the, the names he used to call me. But <laughs> I, I think it helped me more than it <laughs> hindered me. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got a lot of tough lessons from Bill. Um, I think a lot of our blokes did when, when I come here. But um, I think uh, most of them are better men because of him. Yeah, but when Billy retired, um, he went straight to the conditioning side with, with Folksy mm-hmm. and um, – and Billy started um, making people box each other and all that, and yeah. Jason Hetherington and yeah. I think it was uh, uh, Dalton and Ralphie had a bit of a <laughs> scuffle, and they only had to hit each other in the guts and all that. And then R- Ralphie went a little bit low and got him a little bit in the <laughs> in the uh, important section. Yeah, and um, Dalton just whacked him. <laughs> uh, it was so funny, yeah. but he, th- th- it was an accident. Yeah, but Dalton just. Re- you know, reacted to it. It was great. And Bill, just coming into that side, they, yeah. they'd had the heartbreak of getting beat the year before. Mm. So mm. they were already carrying that. And I, 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 was, I think I was the only change yeah. from the side from the year before. So, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Um, Scotty Wilson was the fullback. Yes. And then Chris Tassel was before I, I got a game in first grade. So um, was, they were ready to go anyway. No disrespect to those players that you mentioned, but uh, having – a player of the caliber of Rocket come in at fullback was just like, I'm not going to use the old cliches, but it, it was it was just that extra element that Ooh. that that nailed the nailed the lineup. Do you get someone that can um, glide across the ground? Glide is the way, isn't and it? And Hugh McGrady was the yeah. same too. Like, yeah, I yeah, put yeah, them both yeah. both together, and uh, you know when they get the ball in the open, mm. it's a try every single time. And you know, you know good runners that. when they look like they're on roller skates, don't you? <laughs> Rod always looked to me like he was on roller skates because he was just so beautifully yeah. moving through. <laughs> but the team was so good, Bill. It was My job was easy. Um, just It was like watching a show, watch the forwards, you know, belting other teams and, <laughs> and then we'd throw the ball around and, and Bar would pull something off or Jimmy or, mm. you know, we just had so many match winners in our team. Yep. It was 
just a great team to play in. And, and if we made a mistake, you mm. know, we're pushing the ball. Yeah. Mm. We give it to each other. We would bag each other absolutely because we needed it. Mm. Doesn't matter what it was or who it was. That that's an interesting thing to mention too, because people from a fan's perspective sometimes see that on the pitch, yeah. and sometimes it's a it's a sign that the team's unraveling or mm, or it's mm. not happy. But it also is a sign of a very mature team that they can yell at each other. And there's the respect there to accept the criticism on the field yep. and get on with it, isn't yeah. there? So yeah. it's it can be a very it can be a positive sign. Yeah, like I said before, Bill, everyone like we everyone liked each other. So mm. and they were always taking the Mickey out of each yeah. other. So when and, and you know when our senior players like when Bar said something, no one would talk. You know, yeah. um, it was just that that was the way, it would, and everyone reacted. So it was a perfect. Scenario. You felt sorry for me, Bill. That was <laughs> no, good, wasn't no, it? they didn't. It's <laughs> great. They just listened to him because he knew what he was talking about. Let's talk about the the ructions. Four players were destined for the ARL, signed by Parramatta. You talk about Jimmy Dimmick, Jason Smith, Jared McCracken, Dean Pay. I mean, amazing, amazing talent in that group. There. Oh. What, when did you find out? What was what happened? Um, they told us. I think it was at a pool session at Birong Pool. Yeah. And uh, I, I think I, uh, they told us at the Chistel pub after the pool session and um, I think I just walked out of the room. I, I really can't remember and mm-hmm. I think I was in tears. I was so upset. Not that upset because that they signed for Super League but they split a really good team up. Yeah. So they, this team, I was retiring that year. The team could have went through mm. for a number of uh, competitions after that. But splitting the team up with four very good players. Yeah. It was a massive story at the time, Rod. What, yeah. what do you recall about it? Um, yeah, there was a lot of hysteria and a lot of media. So um, we were still trying to win, but um, yeah, I think. It hurt us, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it hurt us. Really hurt us. Yeah. How did you get over it as a team? I don't know. I don't know if we did. <laughs> um, yeah, we, yeah did. we did. We, we virtually um, had a drink. Yeah. Spoke about it. I spoke to Jimmy and Crackers and Dino on that prior to the team and then I spoke to the whole team at once mm. and uh, we they were there for the rest of the year. So we said, let's just do it. We'll just be the best we can. And we never lost a game after that. I think we beat St George here in the, in a playoff to make the semis, yeah. I think. I'm, I can't remember. Well... Just a quick sketch of the season. You, you won five of the first six games, but then you lost six of the next ten. Uh, just having a quick look at the results. Okay. But you finished the season winning 11 of 13, including the four finals oh, wow. games you played in the grand final. I didn't know. I didn't know That's that. including the finals. Yeah. That's yeah. Including the finals. yeah. But the, um, uh, the interesting thing about it was how you were able to galvanise and get those results because you guys were effectively tools in a much bigger game, clearly. Mm. And and um, and I'm not taking sides here at all because both sides were having wins in terms of players they'd signed. Rod, you're an early casualty, yeah. uh, and a, and a win for the Super League team. Obviously, the people behind that would have promoted the fact that they'd signed you, for example. And then a bit further down the track, um, Canterbury, as you said, uh, Bar were one of the initial Super League signings, and to take four players from them over to the establishment uh, was was seen as a big win for the establishment. So. Mm. All that stuff was going on, and you guys couldn't care less. You just wanted to win footy games, am I right? We liked each other. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's a big yeah. thing in in any sport. Um, if there's one person or two people that aren't getting on with the other teams, mm. other players, well, you get rid of them. So, but we didn't want to get rid of the four players. We wanted them, and we needed them to win the comp, and we did that. I know Crackers didn't play because Chris Anderson left him out of the team, but I know that. Um, if there's a 95 grand final team mm. um, doing something, I'd invite Crackers straight away, mm. straight back into the team. Can you talk about why he was made the exception there? Was it just no, anything I, he I said got, publicly? Listen, or? whatever happened at the time, you don't know, yeah. I've got no idea and I don't yeah. want to know. No, and we won't and speculate. I, and I really don't care. Yeah, yeah. we won't um, speculate without them being he's here. He's still a mate with me. Yeah. Yep, and and we've seen yeah we've seen Jared at the ambassadors function, mm. which is good to see. Yep, um, Bar's injury management. Um, how how did you see it, Rod? Uh, I know you came in mid season, but um, 
we'll, we'll get the details in a moment of exactly what took place. But what were your observations when you first came in? Well, your questions were, where is he? Uh, not really. <laughs> no. Bill, when you play football with someone like him every weekend and you see what he does in a game, there's, there's no questions to ask. You just let him do what he has to do and um, as long as he's playing on the weekend, who cares? It was one of the stories of the season that uh, you were not often at training. If it, what were you doing? I was inside with Billy Johnson yeah. with, on the on the mitt. So yeah. and what was and the problem? That's a oh, just bone on bone with my knees. That's all. So I I go home and about two or three times a week I'd do ten k's around the around the around the streets. Were you supposed to run ten k's no, two or three no. times a week? <laughs> but I needed it. Oh, listen, I was still am a bit of a drinker, so I enjoyed a drink. So. <laughs> The only way I can get it out of your system is run. What were your instructions, Bar? For oh, don't, you don't have to go through all the details. Yeah, no, but keep, generally, keep off me, off me legs. Right. So yeah. how did how did, what what, did, what plan did they give you to be fit enough to play a game each week, but at the same time not wear out your knees? Well, it was a time when um, we started riding push bikes, and I was. Oh, that dr- was when Billy started the. push I bike was thing. dreadful <laughs> on a push bike. So Rocket was I. wasn't good. So was and, I. And um, <laughs> we, we'd be on a, we'd be on the freeway when it first opened and. <laughs> Me and Rocket would be 20, 20 yeah. kilometres behind the, the first bloke and mm. we, we couldn't do it. So mm. I said, well, I'm getting rid of my bike and Rocket said the same thing. I, ca- I can't ride a bike. No. It's dangerous yeah, for not us. Not on that highway. No. Yeah. That was was it Folksy or Billy that actually came up with that? Folksy was a keen side. Oh, Folksy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I Folksy. think Folksy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it was Folksy. And, and was, it, was it for all the team or was it for the guys who weren't in the team that week? That was everybody. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. had to ride. Whatever, 30 yeah. players or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, no exceptions. No. <laughs> no exceptions with Bill. And <laughs> and uh, did you do aqua aerobics and stuff like oh, that? Oh, listen, I'm a dreadful s- swimmer. <laughs> I sink straight away, straight in the pool. I'm yeah. down. You're, you don't have any options, yeah. did you? Yeah. They had yeah, no you, options. Yeah, Sorry. Bill, you don't see many Aboriginal swimmers. <laughs> 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 and, and, yeah, that, a lot of the name calling was at the pools with Bill. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And what about um, – so what work did you do when you're in, when you're away from the field? You were on the road, on just running kilometres and kilometres. So keep me fitness up. And why couldn't you go on the field then and do drills and stuff like that? Because you probably not. That was secret. Oh, yeah. They didn't so, want me out there. So. so what were you actually supposed to do though? What do they want you to Nothing. do? Nothing. Really? Nothing. How could you keep your aerobic fitness? Exactly up? right. That's what I said to them. Well, uh, they did the push bikes in the rooms and the boxing and all that, but. That's not good. That's not enough. If you're using your legs on the field, you've got to yeah. do the same thing. Did you know he was running in secret? No, I, I knew he was doing whatever he had to to play. So <laughs> I, I didn't worry about anything Bar was doing. Did, what about ball work? Uh, yeah, I did ball work. Plays yeah. and things like yeah, that? Yeah, no, we did. You did all I that. I did Thursday, Friday ball work yep. and whatever, a Saturday morning, but we didn't yeah. do much on a Saturday morning. We had a barbecue upstairs on a Saturday morning, so that's about, that's about all. I suppose you didn't have to really worry about him too much, did you? No. He knew where to be. You just had to listen to him, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and what, what was it like uh, playing around Bar? I mean, obviously one of the greatest, if not the greatest support player in the history of the game, but he would be then sometimes looking for support too. So how did you know where to be when he knew where to well, be? Well, I asked him early in my time at Canterbury, how do you do it? And he, he kind of just basically... In, one or two words said, mate, just when anything happens, run up the middle of the field. And I think I was, that's mm. where I scored most of my tries from running up the I middle remember of your try you scored when, off Robert Ralph. Yeah. Then here oh, at Belmore. Yes, the was it at Belmore here? No, no, no. That was at the football stadium. Football stadium, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, oh, yeah. Ralph, he threw an incredible ball. <laughs> yeah. oh. but that's, that, that was the thing about our forwards. They were tough, but they were skillful too. Mm. And, and unless you played with them, I suppose you didn't realise that. Yeah, we used to bash each other up also <laughs> at training. Yeah, uh, forwards against the backs most of the times, and yeah. um, there was blood going everywhere <laughs> sometimes. And even we played touch football together. But I think I, I split Simon Gillies across the head once, and oh, it was just incredible what we used to do to each other. Given the standard of players you had, and um, the way the season was going, and all those other peripheral things, was there a time that you felt like you? Couldn't win the comp or could win the comp. What was the mood in the team? Was it always confident? Did it have? Was it fluctuating? What I, was it like? Look, I never. I, as soon as I come to this club, I remember the great Alan Morris Nelson. Mm. Everyone, you know, all the gear guys, the, the 
behind the scenes guys everyone expected us to play in the big games in september so mm. that was just my mindset as soon as i got here um so and when you looked at our team and you just if you had a moment just to think about who you're going to play footy with um, you weren't really worried about the other guys we're playing against because by that time and bar you went right through this uh, period of success at the club by that time the club had a reputation for even if you had a by our standards ordinary season that is coming in down the list whether it's the five or the six mm. or the eight everyone was afraid of canterbury in the playoffs mm. um and and i guess that must have been the attitude in 95 because you did finish sixth yeah. yeah we did we had to um but we were in the grand final the year before mm. against uh canberra and we fl- they flogged us by 30 points um didn't feel good, but we still had we had the, virtually the same team, mm. yeah. you know. Um, and Rocket comes in halfway through the season, who know we know can, can score tries, and that's what we did. And and so, what about the final series? Um, went through Saints, Broncos, Canberra, which would have been which would have been nice given what happened the previous year, and then of yep. course Manly. But as you went through the finals, was there that sense of momentum? Yeah, we because that's four games. Yeah, we we spoke about it, um, and I I said I was retiring that year. Um, when did you make that announcement? I can't remember. I think it was just before the grand final. I think didn't we? I think we were talking about it with Bullfrog and uh, Alan, um, Chris Anderson and Lynn, and they wanted to do something here. I think our last game here at Belmore against the Cowboys. Was the Cowboys. Yeah, we it was bye them. bye bar. Yeah. A, a train <laughs> was out the back. Yeah, with bye bye bar on it. So uh, we knew what was coming on. So, yeah, um, that that was an emotional time. If for there me. was one moment in that series that I remember, at, at being a fullback, I, I didn't remember much really <laughs> about the games, but I remember Dino busted uh, Glenn Lazarus oh, ribs. Shoulder early charge. In the, yeah, early in the semi against the Broncos, mm. and then I knew we were home. Yep. Yeah. That was the moment that was, I thought. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, we were ready yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah he, he, well, Dino... Obviously, one of the great props, but, uh, yeah, but so look, was Glenn. Lazo was one yeah, of the great props. Yeah, you look at the size time. of Lazo and yeah, Dino. There's, yeah. the, Lazo's, oh, I'm going to say double the size, but he's quite big, big man. compared yeah, to yeah. Dean was. True. Yeah. And Dino didn't do weights then either. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was tough, Dino. Yeah. And, and uh, tell us about that last game. How, how hard was that? I mean, yeah, as Manly we know, game? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the, you, you, no, your last uh, the game at Belmore, the Bar oh, Bar game. Yeah. Well, it's quite easy. We beat him by 66 6 or something like that. I had a good day too. I scored three. Yeah. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Big crowd. It, it was, was a good, good crowd here. Yeah. Uh, it was a good send off for us uh, to go into the semi finals. Uh, and we knew our crowd was going to turn up the week after that and the week after that. And I remember uh, turning up at uh, the football stadium and every, it was 95 game. So it was 90, uh, it was Winfield Cup. That's right, yeah. And everybody had a maroon hat on. And I thought everybody was, uh, was a uh, Manly supporter. <laughs> and I'm going, have a look at the Manly supporters here. Everybody had these hats on. But they're yeah. actually the red Winfield they're hats. Winfield, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, um, how did you feel about being in that last season um, for, for Bar? I mean, uh, I, what was it like coming into a team that this bloke you'd played against for a number of years and probably – been very frustrated by, I imagine, on a lot of <laughs> yeah. occasions, Rocket. But yeah. Oh, was it, was, like? it was good. It was good to be on the same side as him. Um, yeah. Most of the teams I played against that played when he like he was playing against us, all of our stuff was focused on him. So mm. um, I felt like I knew him pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it wasn't, very, it wasn't a nice, pleasant feeling. But, um, yeah, you're always uncomfortable because you just didn't know what he was going to do. So we get to the grand final um, against Manly, and I think I've said this before. Uh, I've had a, a fair bit of uh, done a fair bit on camera with Spud Carroll, and um, Spud really, you know, they they went on and did things, so they were okay. Yeah, but yeah, they they really didn't like losing that year. They only well, lost a couple of games, two games all year. Yeah, they and come to the grand final, we smash them. How yeah. did you? Which is, and I'll repeat that anecdote too, because I. I went to a news conference uh, that the, the I did a story on the club uh, prior to the game, but I also went to a news conference. And after the news conference, I went up to to uh, to Chris Anderson and just said, because uh, because everyone asked him how you're going to beat Manly because they'd had such mm. a good year, and I went up to him after and he said, off the record, we're going to bash him. 
<laughs> and yeah, uh, of course, yeah. that's not something you say publicly, but he meant that in the nicest way. Yeah, but how do you how do you bash Spud? Yeah, Dave Gillespie. Uh, Menzies, yeah. uh, who yeah. else was in the Kosef? Yeah. Well, that's H- what I'm about to ask that? you, bro. How do you bash that? I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh. Ask the forwards. H- you better ask Brady. Hunger. <coughs> yeah, hunger, Dino, that's, that's what it was. Dalton. Mm. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. These kids coming through who played for another five to eight years mm. and kept going and got in the grand final in 98. Virtually the same team was in the, in 98 mm. too, so. Um, yeah, they, they they were hungry. They wanted to win a comp. They lost in '94, and we won in '95. And they they felt what it was like to win a comp. It's amazing how powerful. I know it's the oldest saying in the book, but there's a reason for it. You saw it a lot, and that yeah. is, you you lose one grand final if you're lucky enough to get to the next one. Mm. Um, it's it it has a lot of power, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I remember that grand final. I, I think someone told me I, that semi final series. Not that I had to make many tackles, but. I, I, I missed one tackle. It was Nick Kossoff in the grand final. Oh, at, Chook. At, and there was about three of our black Chook. Yeah, Chook uh, Dalton. Yeah, there was about yeah. three of them just smashed him into the sideline. Side. Yeah. You know, they had, everyone had everyone's back. It yeah. was a magnificent team to play in. And, and look, in, in, uh, when, when you put things into perspective, you look at teams that aren't going well and you look at teams that do go well, what you just talked about has a hell of a lot to do with it, doesn't it? Yeah. The difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it is and, and and that in turn gets back to what you guys were saying about the fellowship mm. in the team uh, and that kind of the whole the whole attitude versus aptitude thing in defence uh, attitudes goes a long way. Oh, we had plenty of attitude. Uh, like our team was very. We played aggressive. We didn't play anything else but. But when we got the ball in our hands, like we were pretty too, mm. very pretty with rocket out the back and. You know, we're so many blacks that could create stuff. Yep, for each other. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And Bill, the secret to us was we, we were fitter than anyone else, mm. in my opinion. We were mm. always fitter than them, and, but and probably tougher, but and cleverer. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we were definitely fitter than them. We, that's we, why we yeah we wore them down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had respect for them. That's yeah. I think that helped too. Yeah. Um, respect to the team. That'll make you play better. Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting factor, uh, Bar, because. You're right. It, it's um, you, you don't you can't generate that intensity of performance from nothing, can you? You've got to have respect for yep. your opponents because you've got to feel like you need to be there. Yeah. Well, I think Manly had probably seven to eight Australian players yeah. in the team. Had a really good side. Where good backline as well as us. I'm going to say in two years after that game, say '98, mm. we had seven or eight people who played for New South Wales or Australia mm. in that team. And you um. Even though this bloke retired, um, the marketing department – st- <laughs> you stayed in the marketing department, didn't you? Or did you go into coaching? There. He's, still there now. He's still there with them. Yeah, but you went into coaching too. You coached uh, yeah, lower yeah. grades. I and coached then... reserve grade. I, yeah. I won a few comps in reserve grade, but only because Folksy had a great team in first grade. Yeah. Um, it was easier for me in reserve grade. And that's why I went to West Tigers. I thought, oh, I'm, it's pretty easy. But, mate, there's nowhere near it in first grade. <laughs> nowhere near it. How many years – because we, we were talking prior to the show um, about how many years you've actually been with the dogs. And and how many years with you with the West Tigers? Two, three? Yeah, two. Two, two yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then I came so, back, went on the board, then I started working for the club again. So for all but two years, you've been here 40 years. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Working, it's amazing, isn't it? Working, Four decades. With working, yeah, yeah. I wonder how many other people have been with a footy club for 40 years. That might be a good research topic for you, Bill. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to get into that in more detail. Ward, he's been here for a while, quite a while too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Barry Ward, yeah. Yeah, he has too. Um, when I look at those decades, you, you in that period you spanned on the field only. Let's not talk about even the other stuff, just on the field. You spanned three basically eras of success. And I, I say that because... Everyone lumps the 80s together, but you had the 1980 team, of course, which was the breakthrough, but then you had the Warren Ryan early yep. 80s team. And then you had the Gus Gould 88 team. So mm-hmm. in my opinion, there's almost three eras there really that are overlapping. But in your case, let's just say you've got the Wok wins, yep. Yep. you've got Gus, and then you went into the Chris Anderson yep. era and won in 95. So of those three eras, was there anything particularly different about them what distinguished them, or, or and, and what was the? I think we've talked about what they had in common. Yeah. Um, what, what what was different about them? Well, what was in common was the aggression through all the all the clubs, all yep. the players. Um, but the, co- the coaching was completely different. 
from Warren Ryan to Phil Gould to Chris Anderson. There was And does that is that partly because the game changed, Barb, because coaches have to change with the game, or are they just different personalities, different coaches? No, different per- personalities right. and different coaches. Um the Warren took us back to when we were kids at in end grade, how to pass, tackle, yep. all that kind of stuff. Gus speaks so well and mm. you'd run through a wall. Yep. And Chris Anderson was a, a club man who looked after everybody at the club. Mm. So very so different, completely but very different effective. people. Yes. Yeah, it's yep. interesting, isn't it? Um, and, and what was your most satisfying year? Oh, is there one? You know, I don't know. Um, my first grand final in '84, I would think. Yeah. But when I had the trophy aloft in '80 '95, was a, one of the best days of my life. It's like having a. It's it's hard to say, but. It's not as good as having a child, but it's up there. It's for a, for a man who asked Mal Meningo when he won the comp yeah. in eight, not ninety four when they yeah. when they beat us, he was crying. Yep, I remember so that. So I didn't cry, but I was very close to it. To, to well, we talked about bye bye bar at Belmore, um, but that really was the end. That grand final, so yep. that must have been a very different feeling again. Well, I came back the next year too. Remember? <laughs> oh, that's right. Super League <laughs> money, <remember? laughs> yeah, that's right. So it was, but at the time. At the time yep. when you thought, it, how was it? Oh, I was finished, absolutely mm. finished. So I was working for Super League. They, they gave me a job at the time. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll put some weight on and, well, it's not, not hard to, but, <laughs> yeah, I was ready to go. Rod, um, it's been said that, and I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been said that um, around the time you joined Canterbury, that was the time when you were starting your career in the police force. Is that right? Well, I just come back from the academy, so right. um, I joined. I went to the academy in August '94, and um, in that off season, Gus come to the Roosters and yeah, the Super League ARL war. And when I come back from the academy in February, I, I, get to, I actually it wasn't halfway through the year; it was after six games. Mm. So the first two right. I played for the Roosters. The next four, because of the Super League ARL war, which I didn't know about at the time, but. Um, yeah, I was never going to get a game and I got put on the bench for reserve grade mm. and, and got dressed four weeks in a row and then <laughs> I thought, well, I, I better do something um, because I'm not going to get a game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, you know, joining the cops was something I always wanted to do um, it was, and I knew rugby league was not forever. So, yeah, Mark Murray was the coach at the Roosters and we had a conversation because uh, he was a school teacher, so I said, and he goes, yep, no worries, you can go to the academy, mate. You just make sure you fit. And mm. I don't know if you know uh, Golden Bill, there's nothing to do <laughs> down there. It was I the know, fitt- it's it was, a, it was the fittest side it ever been because <laughs> there was nothing to do down there. But, yeah. Um, and then, you know, circumstances changed and then I got lucky enough to get a game with the Bulldogs. And yeah. Did um, the whole Super League thing and then the, the more money that was coming into the game, did that change your attitude towards – being a police officer, were you starting to think maybe you can, you don't need being a police officer, mm. or was that something that you always knew you were going to do? Yeah, it was something I always wanted to do because of my upbringing. Mm. But um, you know, playing first grade rugby league, you know, it's every kid's dream. It's so I, I, I don't want to sound like a dickhead, but it wasn't about money for yeah. me. It was mm-hmm. just about playing and you know, always wanting to get to that level. So. Um, yeah, well, I, it wasn't, I, well, Rocket, it wasn't about money because yeah. there was no money around in the early days. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, it didn't true. didn't matter. Yeah. It went out there and had a, a, a game with your mates more yeah, than anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and just love playing, you know. It was, it was a real privilege. And is it true that um, one of the reasons you ended your career when you did was because you knew you had that – solid career in the police force that was still there and you were still passionate about? Did that make your decision easier to oh, retire? Probably. And, uh, you know, Father Time was probably telling me to, um, it was time to, you know, give it away. Yeah, be, only because he didn't, I wouldn't have wanted to let anyone down at, at playing at that level. So, mm. or holding, you know, they signed the general, so they had a great replacement mm. anyway. That's right, yeah. Was, was Mitch Newton playing here when you were... Pl- yeah, yeah, Mitch. So we Mitch, had two police officers. Yeah, yeah. That's right, Mitch yeah. Mitch and, and Rocket, yeah. 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 
So and Mitch, two beautiful people, mate. So, <laughs> so Mitch, Mitch, I think he, um, when he signed the Super League deal, I think he took some time off. Yes. You know, yeah. To play footy, but mine and uh, Opes was cool with it. I, I just did redu- reduce shifts during the first year because right. uh, I, I suppose that when I was fitting into Canterbury and I'd fall asleep in videos and say, he'd give it to me, <laughs> he'd give it to me sometimes, but um, <laughs> I, I think because I was playing all right, I, Say okay. How many people did you? Uh, what, what? Where were you working in the police department? So I, was, I, I read that someone, you know, got uh, breath tested by you once, and they made you sign an autograph for them, <laughs> stuff like that. It was a lot of that stuff going it's on. It's funny. People are funny like that. They they don't care where you are or you know uh, what you're doing. And most people were polite. You, you'd get the average drunk when mm. you're working. He'd, he'd give you a mouthful, but that was just a part of it. You ever drag someone off to the lockup and uh, they want you autographed then? So, sometimes, well, but that was a bit weird. <laughs> that would be a bit weird. <laughs> that was a bit weird, but yeah. I'll ask you a question. Did you catch up to, with any of your football mates from the Roosters and that while you're working for the police? Have you had to pull them in or? Oh, not <laughs> really. I, I've, like uh, sometimes when we recognise someone that we knew, we'd, yep. pull, we'd pull them over and I'd send my partner to tell them. Uh, you okay, know, yep. Yeah, turn the car off. Put your, put your hands out the window and I'd get on the loudspeaker, just, just to put the wind up. And, and they'd panic, but it was just a bit of fun. That's yeah. all. No, that was good. I'll I tell you what, we talk about how much rugby league's changed, you know, since you guys are playing uh, and you started playing. But what about policing? Goodness yeah. me, that's changed a lot uh, yeah. it, since you started policing, Rod. Yeah, it's a different world now, Bill. Oh. Um, so much, this, rightly or wrongly, there's so much accountability and there's so yeah. much um, media. Mm. around you doing your job so um, there's a lot of scrutiny and you know the public want you everywhere mm. um, I don't think that's changed but now everything is the police coming and trying to sort it out um, mm. I think you know when I was growing up if someone had a loud TV on the police didn't get called mm. yeah uh, you know or if someone was having a, a bit of an argument, we didn't get called, but now mm. because I suppose the world has changed. Um, mm. Unfortunately, with domestic violence, it's really yep. um, serious, and yeah. a lot of bad Very things important. happen with that. So, yeah, um, I, I, there's been a lot of good changes, but um, I think there's a lot of stuff that we could have left alone too. A lot of red tape, so yeah. to speak. I, uh, did you ever get involved in any scamming with your mates? Because I remember once working with the great Barry Sheen on TV. He talked a Western Australian policeman into pretending to arrest me. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're in a public place for a public appearance and I had to park somewhere in a hurry. And and this copper approached me and said he was going to arrest me because that was my car, it was a high car. And he had me he had me going for a while mm. until I spotted Barry doubled over laughing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Did the guys ever put anything up to you to use your uniform to have a bit of fun? Obviously... Oh, within the law, yeah, occasionally. I know you can get to trouble for those things. Yeah, but. occasionally <laughs> it, it would be a little bit of a little bit of fun, but you you just it was too hard to because you even if you knew everyone knew the gig was on, yeah, you know, you'd get someone who, was, who did who know, <laughs> and the next minute they'd be calling the police station saying, yeah. "What's going on here?" And yeah, so it'd be a bit yeah. hard. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah. My nephew and niece is in the police force. One's up the Central Coast and. Uh, I think one's in in town at the cross. Okay. So yeah, you there um, they, you would have seen um a, n- a number of friends and acquaintances who've got into the police force. I suppose you you you've been around long enough now. You would have helped quite a few careers. Yeah, a lot of Aboriginal um, cops I've uh, had a little bit to do with uh, during That'd my time, good. and yeah, yeah. It's, it's been rewarding. Uh, just the, just asking you the questions that. As a young Aboriginal fellow, that I wanted to ask too. So, mm, mm. Um, it is a great job. It, it is a great job. It's a thankless job, but it's very mm. rewarding. So, um, we can't do without them. And if you know anyone, Bill, we need more. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, that's yeah, okay. that's yeah. a good point. That's interesting. Well, there you go. You've heard it <laughs> on Bulldogs <laughs> Unleashed. <coughs> um, there you go. Um, Rod Silver's recruiting for the police force, <laughs> so you've heard it first on Bulldogs Unleashed. Well, if you can one help thing out. about the police now, there's no height restrictions. Yeah. Where mm. years ago it used to be five yeah. ten, I think yeah. maybe yeah. five ten, because yeah, I wanted to be right. a copper, yeah. 
And yeah. I never grew to that height. So. That's right. There used to be. I remember that yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah, they used to have all sort of restrictions, but um, yeah. they've opened it right up. It's all about um, equality, so yep. everyone's got a chance. Fair enough too. Uh, it's been wonderful again. Uh, Terry Lamb, thank you so Thanks, much. Bill. Rod Silver, thank you. Pleasure, Bill. Thanks, You've Rob. been watching Thanks Bulldogs Unleashed, brought to you by Reclaim the Game. We'll have another edition next week.